To celebrate my 10,000th ounce of spilled booze, I've decided to take a look at the place that How to Drink started the old fashioned, the very first episode I ever did. <laughs> I want to take a bigger look at the old-fashioned and its history. To do that, we should start with the cocktail. Before the term or phrase old-fashioned came into vogue, which was about the 1870s, there was just the cocktail, a combination of sugar, spirit, bitters, and uh, very little else. And so the phrase old-fashioned came into vogue as a mechanism of implying that you wanted one the old way. And the old way, was, you know, because we're talking now old fashioned comes into vogue in the 1860s, 1870s, 1880s for sure. Uh, the old way would have been prior to the 1860s, early 1800s. So we're gonna make a Geneva cocktail. I know that an old fashioned is typically going to be made with whiskey and we're getting to that. At this time, um, whiskey certainly was popular, but Holland's gin or Geneva would have been equally popular. And to sort of illustrate the history of this drink, we're gonna make this one with the Jennifer. You would start by taking a lump of sugar, um, and I have this Demerara sugar cube, and, uh, and soak that with some bitters. Place that at the bottom of your glass. You got that in there. And now we want to add to that a wine glass of our spirit, or two ounces of spirit in this case. So two ounces of Jennifer. And now I'm going to add three ounces of water. So remember, this is 1800, 1806. There's no ice. The cocktail was meant to be served at room temperature. It was not a, um, a cold drink. That was for juleps. Uh, the cocktail would have been a room temperature drink. We're gonna stir that up and do our best to get that sugar cube to dissolve. Now truly, at this time, they would have been using something called lump sugar. It comes in a big cone typically, and it's cut with sugar nippers, which are little scissors. It's a, it's a different kind of sugar than is, is available today. And instead of a spoon, I would have been using a toddy stick. And now, um, if you wanted to, you might have embellished this drink with a bit of grated nutmeg. They put nutmeg in everything, as Townsend's will point out. And that is a cocktail, a Turn of the 1800s Geneva cocktail. It smells very nutmeggy. Surprisingly enjoyable. I find that to be um, just the right amount of sweetness and bitterness. Um, the nutmeg actually mates to it really well. Uh, I've never had this before, by the way. The old, the Boomza has a very, um, Unusual mouthfeel. I like that a lot. This is not bad. It's maybe not what you're thinking of when you think of an old fashioned, though. First off, it's not whiskey, it's um, Geneva or Holland's. There's no orange happening here. Um, and this drink, the cocktail, would have been by the 1860s something that every bartender had their own recipe for. They frequently included dashes of absinthe, curacao, lots and lots of fruit. By that time, there would have been ice in them. They switched to syrups. So they started using gum syrup or simple syrup because the presence of ice makes dissolving that sugar impossible. Um, and in, in fact, they were often served with a spoon and in some places called a spoon cocktail so that you could stir it up yourself. Um, it was like a breakfast thing. It was a tonic to wake you up for, and start your day. It wasn't really like a, just a relaxing kind of thing. That was what juleps were for. Uh, I don't know if it's true or not, but I have heard that the phrase cocktail comes from the practice of less than savory horse traders shoving a bit of um, peeled ginger up to the up the rectums of a horse they were trying to sell because it would cause them to hold their tail up, cock their tail, and look healthy. And so by the 1860s, uh, cocktail was a very complicated thing and it involved many spirits. We now call them an improved whiskey cocktail. It's one of my favorite drinks. Um, in some places it would have been called a Sazerac. The formulation and recipe changed regionally and from bartender to bartender. I'll just whip one up right now the way that they might have made in the 1860s. Somebody walks up to my, my establishment and asks me for my house cocktail. So I would go two bar spoons of gum syrup, Dash of curacao. A 
dash of maraschino. Oh yeah. Uh, a dash or two of absinthe. Two to four dashes of Angostura bitters. And a two ounce pour of rye. Some disagreement about what a lump of ice means, but at my bar it means a big square of ice. Oh, we'll have to pare that down a bit. Now if this was a very fancy bar, like a nice hotel bar in New York City, I might even go so far as to carve this into the shape of a diamond. And then I would stir it up with a stirring rod or a bar spoon. Pull a ribbon of orange peel or lemon. Light a match. Give the customer what they're paying for. Really show off here. My skills as a uh, bartender. Now the drink has literally got smoke hanging off the ice there. And there you have a rye cocktail, as it might have been served at one of the better bars circa 1860. Let's give it a taste. I love this. See now, oh, that's such a wonderful drink. Mm. I mean, the curacao is a little bit lost. I could actually handle a little more curacao in there. It's just the right amount of sweetness. Um, the rye is extremely front and center. All of the other little flavors that we've added just kind of round it out and give it a longer evolution. The absinthe, of course, lingers quite a long time. I like this drink a lot, but not everybody did. Why didn't they? Was it because it didn't taste great to them? Or was it because there was a kind of um, an ideological thing that they didn't want their drink so fancied up, you know? They, they felt like, a, you know, a bit of a poof sipping from this, you know, with all those fancy ingredients in there, like a city boy or something. And it put people off. And so when the old fashioned comes into, I love it. I must be a puffy city boy. And so when the phrase old fashioned comes into vogue in the 1870s and the 1880s, it is specifically calling back the old way. You know, I don't want one of them fancy city boy cocktails, just make it the old style way with none of them syrups in it. Okay, so we get the old fashioned. The old fashioned, even when it was a new drink, was a bit of a historical anachronism. Because what we're gonna do, even though we're gonna use ice, because they didn't mean a cocktail 1806 style, they meant a cocktail 1880 style. They want it cold, they want it a little wet, but they still want you to use the sugar typically instead of a syrup. And they want that soaked sugar cube with bitters. Okay, plenty of bitters in there. They want Typically rye, again, a two ounce pour of rye. They want ice. We're gonna stir it up. Now you will notice that there's still some sugar not dissolved at the bottom of my glass here. To an orderer of an old-fashioned circa 1870, uh, that would have been actually desirable. That would have been a mark of its oldness. And they want a twist of lemon, I think. And now we have the 1870s old-fashioned, not the 1870s whiskey cocktail. A lot less sweet, because the sugar is less dissolved. Eminently drinkable, though. A great showpiece for a uh, glass of rye. You know, we get all of those rye spice. There's a, a nice clean lemon uh, up front kind of nose. Yeah, strong lemon odors. No gum syrup, so the mouth feels a lot less pleasing. By the mid-century, you know, the Mad Men period, tastes actually ranged a little bit sweeter and somewhere the old fashioned evolved into a monstrosity that I've also I've heard referred to as an old-fashioned number two 
or as a mid-century old-fashioned. My friend Natalie at Ar Arsenic and Lace is coming out with a book about mid-century cocktails. You should check it out. And so let's talk about that. Let's take a look at the mid-century old-fashioned. Now, the first thing we have to do to make a mid-century old-fashioned is mercilessly cut into our orange and produce from it a wedge. And we're gonna take that whole orange wedge and we're gonna put that into our glass. I should have some really bad maraschino cherries. I should have some, some neon red ice cream sundae maraschino cherries. By coincidence, I don't. So this particular mid-century old-fashioned is getting gussied up with some nice imported Luxardo maraschino cherries. Two of them, a quarter ounce of simple syrup to a half an ounce. A two ounce pour of bourbon. One, two. The back of a spoon or a muddler to work these ingredients into each other. And uh, this drink would have a few ice cubes in it typically. So uh, I don't have small ice cubes, but I'm just gonna crack some ice in there because we want an um, a mess of small cubes in our glass. And a couple of dashes of bitters, and then we're gonna stir that up a little bit. And here we have the mid-century old-fashioned, as horribly as I can bring myself to make it. All I taste is orange juice. It just tastes like orange and cherries. And a little bit of a little bit of the bourbon notes, but this is gonna sound like I'm lying, I'm not. The bourbon notes that are not being masked, that still show through, when they mate with the orange and the cherry, it kind of tastes like an ashtray. A little bit, like there's a, a slightly acrid, I don't know, yeah, like ashiness to the flavor. Not so bad. I need one more glass. Um, I've run out of gold-rimmed glasses, so I'm going to make the final Old Fashioned, my preferred today Old Fashioned in this glass. And this is the drink that I make uh, when I'm all alone and not trying to impress anybody at all. I think if you have the option, a Demerara syrup helps you out here. And I will do somewhere between a quarter and a half an ounce. Two dashes of Angostura bitters. I prefer a mm, bourbon, old-fashioned. The biggest ice cube I can get my hands on. This one actually almost fits into the glass. Try to, I turn it sideways like this when, I'm, when I have a half a brain to think to do so, so that it doesn't splash back out of me. And then I'll give it a quick stir. Um, I'll pull a rip off of this orange. Quick twist, lots of expression from that guy. That's how I make the old fashioned that I drink when there's no cameras around and I'm not trying to impress anybody. Um, sometimes the simple will be a maple syrup if I'm feeling a little saucy, as it was in our very first episode. Uh, and sometimes it'll just be a Demerara or regular simple syrup. I, I won't go with a granulated sugar or sugar cube because as evidenced by our 1870s throwback reactionary cocktail, uh, it's not really dissolving very well. And that is divine. So first off, the, the main ingredient, of course, is four rows of single barrel, which I happen to love. Um, and this amount of orange, the skin of the orange, is the exact correct amount of orange to incorporate into that. It really does actually, rather than masking the flavor of that nice bourbon, accentuates it. That's, that's lovely. Great aroma. Tastes, it smells a little bit like mulling spice and, I don't know, just a warm, good place. It's a little proofy. There's a little bit of fire on this, but I like that. It feels very nice in your mouth, it's cold. Um, it doesn't suck the waters out of your mouth. It doesn't, it's not persimmon dry in that way. It's just a really 
wonderful old fashioned. Tastes like, as I've said before, Christmas in a glass. Um, I maintain that that is accurate when it's done right. Will I flame an orange? Sometimes. If my matches are within my eye line, I might grab them and flame the orange peel. Whew, made five old fashions for you guys. It's pretty wild. We didn't cover a Wisconsin old fashioned. That should probably be its own episode, but that's a, an old fashioned made much like a mid-century old fashioned, but with brandy instead of uh, bourbon. I mean, there's infinite variations, right? Because as I said, when we talk about the cocktail, every bartender would have had their own version of it. And so it's funny too, because of these drinks that uh, I've made here, my two favorites are my old fashioned and the cocktail. Let's uh, put them head to head. Two-fisted drinking. We should have a graphic for that. Grassy, earthy notes. Hmm. Mm. The absinthe in the evolution, that anise note comes out at the very end. Very pleasing mouthfeel with the, the use of gum syrup. Cinnamon, peppery spices. Orangey, orangey nose. This features the bourbon a lot more. So here you get those caramel and vanilla notes, some cinnamon, I would say, a tan, you know, you can taste the barrel a little bit better. It's just different, very different. This one shows off the spirit more than the bartender, whereas this one is more about the bartender. I made five old fashions. I made so many that I ran out of glasses and swish glasses, so that's enough. And we made a cocktail of the turn of the 1800s. We made the improved cocktail of the 1870s, old fashioned 1870s style. We made a mid-century old fashioned. This old fashioned with bourbon the way that I like it. Five glasses of booze. Let's uh, line them up, knock them down. Here we go. Malty smoothness. I mean, it's like, like um, it's very sweet in a very, it's sweet like um, in a grainy kind of way. Oh, wow. That smells, okay, so if you've ever been to Epcot Center, you know the scene in uh, Spaceship Earth when Rome is burning? This smells like Rome is burning, which I love. Um, that tastes great. What was this one? This was the improved whiskey cocktail. Yeah, I love that drink. This is a great drink. I don't know why people got upset about this drink. It's weird. I think it had to be political. I think people were politically upset about that drink. So this is the old fashioned uh, 1870 style. Um, much drier, much more acrid, uh, bitter spirit focused than this. This is a much more rounded, incorporated exploration of flavors. Boy, that was poetic of me. And then this is the um, 1950s old-fashioned of, uh, I don't know why, I imagine that this is John Waters' favorite drink. It's probably not, but I, for some reason I think that John Waters films, Baltimore, big hair. Ugh. Ugh. I don't like it. What can I say about it? It tastes like bad candy. Um, and then this is the old-fashioned the way that I like it. And I do very much. That's great. I'm on Twitter at how to drink. I'm on Instagram at how to drink. I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink. Uh, and if you like stuff like this, check it out. It's a cool place. I've got different stuff over there, secret episodes. I've got, you know, behind the scenes stuff. And so next week, every Friday, there's another cocktail. I will see you guys next Friday with another drink on how to drink. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Oh, man. It's all right. It's cool. It's different. It's very much like a punch. It's very nutmeggy. Townsends would love it. Oh, shit. I need these fluids, these electric lights.